In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Welcome to our study of the Sunday of Pentecost. This is the final meditation of the Sundays from Pascha to Pentecost. I hope you have found these meditations informative and spiritually rewarding. As All Saints Church in Wirton, West Virginia is now live streaming our services, I invite you to participate in those services and listen to the sermon after the Gospel reading. Those services are broadcast live and will be available as a recorded service to watch after the fact for about two weeks. Our focus today celebrates the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the people of God, beginning the greatest spiritual renewal movement in history that continues to this day. The Gospel reading is from St. John chapter 7, beginning in verse 37. It takes place during, during the Jewish Feast of Tabernacles, as we see earlier in verse 2. The holiday, also known as the Feast of Booths, begins on Friday at sundown. The booths, or huts, are to remind Jews of the temporary houses their biblical ancestors had to use during the 40-day exodus from Egypt to the Promised Land. The feast lasts for about a week. As John's Gospel tells us, On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Holy Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Therefore many from the crowd, when they heard this saying, said, Truly this is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Will the Christ come out of Galilee? Has not the scripture said that the Christ comes from the seed of David, and from the town of Bethlehem, where David was? So there was a division among the people because of him. Now some of them wanted to take him, but no one laid hands on him. Then the officers came to the chief priests and Pharisees, who said to them, Why have you not brought him? The officers answered, No man ever spoke like this man. Then the Pharisees answered them, Are you also deceived? Have any of the rulers or the Pharisees believed in him? But this crowd that does not know the law is accursed. Nicodemus, he who came to Jesus by night, being one of them, said to them, Does our law judge a man before it hears him and knows what he is doing? They answered and said to him, Are you also from Galilee? Search and look, for no prophet has arisen out of Galilee. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. As we hear in the Gospel, Jesus is foretelling the people of the coming of the Holy Spirit. Historically, this outpouring of the Holy Spirit actually occurred on the Jewish Feast of Pentecost. Father Stylianopoulos elaborates on this. Pentecost was one of the major feasts of the Jews, the Feast of Weeks, a harvest festival celebrated 50 days after Passover. Pentecost literally means the 50th day. It was a feast of joy and thanksgiving for God's protection and his rich provisions. The whole community presented itself before the Lord as a holy convocation. The first fruits of the wheat harvest and loaves baked from the new wheat crop were offered to the Lord. The people worshipped God, the source of life. They thanked him for his great acts of deliverance in history and his gift of the promised land. It was on this festival of Pentecost that God gave humanity the gift of the Spirit, the pledge of a new promised land, God's coming kingdom. When he had completed his mission on earth, the risen Christ charged his followers to remain in Jerusalem. Wait for the gift I told you about, the gift my Father promised. In a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You will be filled with power and you will be witness for me in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Who were the followers of Jesus in these earliest days? The book of Acts tells us that there were about 120 in all. Among them were the 11 apostles, Matthias, the apostle who took the place of Judas Iscariot, the Virgin Mary, 
and the other women disciples, such as Mary Magdalene, who are not named. Present also were the brothers of the Lord, such as James, who became one of the leaders of the Jerusalem church. The church fathers interpret Jesus' brothers as half-brothers, the sons of Joseph by another wife. According to Jewish custom, a brother could also be a cousin or another relative. To number about 120, there must have been many others as well, such as Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. The book of Acts tells us that all of these believers gathered frequently in an upper room to pray as a group. They were waiting upon the Lord to empower them for their mission in preaching and teaching the new life in Christ. To be effective witnesses, they first needed to experience fully the saving power of the gospel they were to proclaim to others. In the Orthodox Church, the Feast of Pentecost is one of the seven great feasts of the Lord observed during the liturgical year. It celebrates the Lord's bestowal of the Spirit upon his church. Pentecost is also a feast of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, one God in three persons, existing eternally and working together for the salvation of the world. Finally, Pentecost celebrates the gift of the Spirit to the world, the historic revelation of the Spirit. The service of kneeling, which is the Vespers of the Monday of the Holy Spirit, is one of the most solemn acts of worship during the whole liturgical year. During this service on the day of Pentecost, we glorify God by recounting his great acts of salvation in history. We solemnly kneel before God, recognizing our sinfulness, and we earnestly implore God for his forgiveness. We pray for God's visitation, protection, and renewal through fresh outpourings of the Spirit. We sing triumphantly, Who is so great a God as our God? You alone are the God who does wonders. The workings of the Spirit in the personal life of the Christian bring about renewal, moral life, sanctification, knowledge, discernment, love, joy, and many other gifts. In the New Testament, many images describe the new life in the Spirit. Jesus spoke to Nicodemus about a new birth in which a person is born spiritually of the Spirit. St. Paul wrote to the Corinthians about the new covenant written by Christ not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, and not on stone tablets, but on human hearts. According to St. Paul, the Spirit removes the veil of darkness from a believer's mind and helps him or her to grow in the glory of Christ. The new life in the Spirit is like a spiritual treasure in clay pots, outwardly decaying, but inwardly being renewed by the power of the Spirit. Every Orthodox Christian experiences their own personal Pentecost at their baptism when they are blessed with a holy chrism oil. As the priest anoints the newly baptized person, he invokes the seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit, showing in a physical action what happens spiritually. And each time we celebrate the great feast of Pentecost, we have the opportunity to renew our relationship with God by yielding to the presence and the power of and the authority of the Holy Spirit, equal to God the Father and God the Son, as we remind ourselves every time we recite the Creed. As we celebrate the great Feast of Pentecost, may the Holy Spirit bless and guide you into the fullness of the life in Christ that God intends for each of us. And as we end our study of the weeks from Pascha to Pentecost, may we go forth with enthusiasm under the protection and the strength of the Holy Spirit sharing the light of Christ within us, and continuing the greatest spiritual renewal of all time. Amen.